pretty persistent. Interrupting this current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting Episode BTWRLM396. Is this the magic show, folks? Does this do it? Do I put my top hat and my cane and I do a dance across the stage for you enough to get you excited to go outside and do something to protect yourself? Or do we go through another week and we just go to 397? I'm hoping really behind hope because I don't see evidence that we really, as a society now, uh, as we, we are going to be moving through to help ourselves. And I don't understand that. I really have a, getting a, a little bit of a problem understanding that. It's really causing me to question, again, what am I doing here? What, what, good, what good is it all? So I do want to touch on a couple things quickly. And what I've been saying against this uh, lockdown nonsense and how it is nonsense, the fraud and all, and how we should approach it, offering what I think is a couple of ways to do that. And partly, it's a multiple step process as well. How we're going to go back to get the foundation. Because what happens is these people that have foisted this nonsense on you, these lies and frauds, are doing so by being able to assume an authority that's really not non-existent. And I've been trying to show you for over a decade or longer how to handle that and to really neutralize it pretty quickly. The only real objective way I've found is that you find the black and white someone of purported authority is claiming under and then show what the real thing was that they were supposed to do. And so it's kind of short and cut and dried about all that, but people wanted to get go on and on. Now, there's a, a comment that was made in the UCY TV, and thank you for making the comment, and I get to see and respond. I think that this was um, the comment was made, and then it heard me talk about uh, Rachel. I think Rachel Ruffin, Ruffin uh, heard me talk about Ohio. Maybe clarify that. But I wanted to bring something out because it, it related to something else in the chat in a comment. The comments uh, going on in the uh, in uh, the U- uh, YouTube uh, sound minds. I want I need everybody to understand that you have to discern the battlefield you have to discern how this is actually going and whether or not your actions are addressing the cause the actual cause not the minions that they're facing in front of you not what we think we act out against to try and protect ourselves or who we hand that to but we have to look at what is actually the the invasion what is that Again, not the agents and the minions of the invasion. You can defeat a minion, but it won't stop the war. It won't stop it against you. So this is what I've been attempting to point out over time. And Rachel made a comment. Dr. Pamela Popper has a lawsuit going on in Oregon. As of today, the courts are refusing to give them the data, official data. Maybe you can contact her and everybody put their heads together. I look to do that at one point, but I noticed because they have an attorney, in answer to this first part, and the path that they he has chosen, and the reason for the path was to just have discovery, and that they didn't challenge, that there was the officials didn't have jurisdiction up front, though they did challenge that the PCR test wasn't valid. Uh, it wasn't something that I want to engage in with an attorney who then also takes this idea that they are they've got the right answer. And this is going speaking back to look at what's really going on. I encourage everybody to to do what they think they can, but I also encourage you to think a little clearer on what you're up against. The, the very question, and, and just even just looking at this, tells me. There's a serious problem with how they instituted this, as I told you that case. And I don't, again, it, you have to really take take what I'm saying as it is, not as you're thinking. I'm not judging people, and I'm not condemning them. It's just what people have come up with to do. I've been offering what you have to look at, it, and we're using these instances to tell us we need to do better. The question it has, as of today, the courts are refusing to give the data, is an improper view of what's going on. The courts aren't to give the data. If they're saying the discovery is not being allowed to gate the data is the problem I've been telling you, why you don't want to enter into that type of a lawsuit. They're going to fight, whoever it is, they, probably the officials, are going to fight tooth and nail on your request for more information. And I've offered a couple of ways. They happen to be in equity, or they will tell you or they're in common law like the habeas, which actually is treated through an equity court. (laughs) 
it's all nonsense. At any rate, you you do it this way. You have to do what you got to do. That the you don't have it in what I'm saying as far as a habeas the obligation to produce data. What you do have to do is have the initial evidence that shows that they likely didn't have authority. They're not warranted for what they do. Now, getting back to this question without getting too far off, that they are looking to the court to give data. Is not You don't go to the court to get the data. You better already have it. There is discovery you can ask of the party, other party, to give you their information. They can fight you. They can be ordered to do certain things, and they still fight you. But that's not the case I want to get into, to tell you the truth, and I've told you that. So there's a problem right there. There's nothing I can change in discussing with Dr. Pamela Popper or her attorney, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but that's going to change this dynamic that they set up. And I've asked us to look at that as an as a example and not go there, not do that, at least as best as you can. And so all of the, the, you that have not been setting yourself to responsibility to protect yourself, if it's not what I'm saying in the way you found you think it's going to work, you're not understanding the second step of problem, which is where I've, we've told and we acknowledge that there's a corruption. And you're going to have to anticipate that as well. And so I would have liked to work with, not work with them. There's no Once you have a, someone like an attorney wants to run with a case, you're not working with that. In fact, there's another gentleman. I, I really, I, I highly respect that there's these, these things going on. But I just don't see how they're going to work out. And there's other things that come, they're like baggage that attaches to these matters. Uh, Reiner Fulmich is also doing that international, trying to get an international class action. But they're stepping into that as well. He's coming from Europe, even though he's an attorney that's, uh, that is um, qualified to practice in California. He's also in, in Germany, I think. And th he's trying to bring a class action for everybody. Well, when I listen, I listen to him, and I and you got and all. Some of you are sending me the emails to let me know that they're out there, so I can go listen. Because I really don't. I'm really not the social media type, and it's not my focus either. But so I'm. But I do appreciate having information because it, 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 I need it as well. Can't look at everything too much. I need to be focused on what the important parts are a lot of times, because it's just too much time spent watching that I need to get to other things more important. But. The, the uh, Reiner uh, Fulmich is also attempting to move something. But when I listen very carefully, for those of you that listen to him, I want you to consider what I've been saying. He brings up all the same points of contention that, that we, we as a people across the globe have. But he also speaks in trying to amass a gobs and gobs of evidence to prove the point in a class action, which the burden would be on him and his attorneys to, to advance. If you listen to what I'm saying, I'm saying that you don't have the burden to produce the evidence. The government does. What you need to do is find that that duty that says that. And I've found, universally so far, it's in one statute. And then you can build from there, but you can start with the one statute. So listen very carefully, even Reiner Fulmich, who brings up all the same points, separation of powers, he made a sensationalized statement about uh, human, uh, the war on humanity or whatever he wants, war crimes. I don't like the word human, okay? we got men and women that are, are need to be responsible and protect themselves. That's the way the system is set up. There's an objective basis to follow to do that. And so far I can tell that it should be good enough, except when you find out that the one that you're now bringing it to, which most people say you're asking their permission, is not, when you understand the, the remedy, is also an obstacle. And so you have to build that in uh, to your thing. And my view on that is that's the exposure. But we need more of society paying attention. If we had the vigilant society, you wouldn't see lots of people going out on the on the tarmacs or whatever, the fronts of buildings and protesting with signs. That would not be happening. Just as I told you, don't do. And now you're finding out the carnage that happens when you have a bunch of violent terrorists on the streets, all in black now that, you don't agree with them. They come and they beat you up and kick and kill you. Told you, I told you this was coming. So you just, just don't even have to go there. And you have a more powerful, instead of standing outside the buildings, go in the buildings. But no one seems to want to do that. This has been a problem over and over for, for years and years. The same problem happens. And I'm not talking an invasion in the, in the way that uh, we would just overcome a place. You're, you're bringing your, your private power to not be interfered with without warrant, and you have the knowledge of the remedies to out that. And so I 
Thank you, Rachel, for, for your comment. I guess I would like to work with people, but it hasn't been my, my experience that we're going to. And you're starting, let's say, on the wrong foot or too far down the path and not actually making the first point, which is what I've been trying to get people to understand. I'm saying that you don't have to have all the work that it requires and you don't argue from the point of mitigation. You first turn to see whether or not these authorities have jurisdiction or authority by the duty that's been given to them by statute. That's a separation of powers violation when that has, doesn't happen. Now you're in fundamental establishment discussion, and they have to overturn that, not you, because in, in this case, in the evidence of the habeas, which is pretty universal uh, as an application within the context of the crown and the crown holdings that we think are not crown holdings through these reservations of right in constitutions, which is a whole different study. We all know what the what the writ of habeas corpus is supposed to do, and it sits there and it hasn't been suspended, and we all don't even know about it. And we can't. I can't get people to just to go do and cut and paste of, of the rules of how you put one together uh, to even begin the process. No, we also get into bigger, more extravagant measures before we're kind of ready, and that's another style problem. However, getting back to this, you cannot go in and just into a court case and sue for, because you're going to sue for discovery to get the information. You don't have to. There's no information to get is another thing. If you've listened to me, folks, if you've listened to me, you know there's no information to get. That's the failure. Why are you working so hard to make cases to sue? And then always is class actions looking for a dollar. When you're going through habeas or equity, you're not looking for the dollar. You're looking for justice. And you're ready, and you have to be willing and ready to start outing those that are going to obstruct you. If that includes the bar association members or the judges, you're going to have to consider that before you move in, because that's what's going to come up. In fact, for those of you that really want to go nuts, you you want to act out. I'm not saying this is invalid. I'm saying that acting out because you'll you'll think it's a great idea. And let's go try that because it looks sounds cool. It's appearing to me that maybe we should be looking at how to sue the entire judicial branch. And I was thinking in my mind, and I just don't haven't had the time to go look. Do we, if I was to do that, or if anybody was to sue the judicial branch for accepting and adopting an executive branch order that had no foundation and closing itself down or limiting its capacity contrary to the Constitution, would I serve the Secretary of State to sue the whole entire judicial branch? Maybe someone can check that out. Maybe someone can consider that path, maybe go down there. It'd be very interesting to see. When you sue all the judiciary, all the members of the bar, how who's going to hear that case to expose the problem and to literally get that right up on top where it says, how did you adopt ma any measures, mash measures, any any type of separation, any kind of imp uh, limitation on my ability to to gain access uh, to the courts by without qualifying how what the infectious agent was you were causing these mitigation measures given in a triparate government, three established independent branches that are co-equal and to be jealous and guarding of their jurisdictions, having inherent power to challenge to make sure that in, in this case, the judiciary made sure the law was fulfilled. How did they do that without an infectious agent? And isn't every judge now that's underneath these rules now in a conflict of interest? Anyway, this is what I think about most people don't. I'm looking at a ways to solve this. I'm looking at an army of people I would have thought by now to be here at this time ready to address this, and I got crickets. And then I have the, the I don't know why I have to continue doing this. It's like a disclaimer. Those of you folks that are fighting and doing something, I'm not talking to you all. I will do something, though, to say here, I am saying if you're fighting for your private rights, like let's say you can argue or stop a mask imposition on you, great. However, that's a minion that's not going to stop the attack of the army coming to, I don't mean the army, the, the army of, of new way of life, the future we want that's not yours, the agenda people, those that want to cause prosperity upon you which is austerity and control. Those people aren't stopped by a mask argument. If you have the gumption to stand up and defend yourself against the imposition of a mask, you, th you have the, the inner, inner power 
to do what I, uh, look at what I'm doing uh, I'm saying to do at least or come up with a better plan and then let me know uh, but we you are the type that comes forward to be able to say oh, I've stood up against and don't wear a mask and I stood against the 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 tide that's not the answer for you in the moment it was but for what's continuing to come to force you in the future that's not the answer and then I see in the comments uh, as well and I do not <laughs> have no idea about her I have no negative real ne about her uh, but Peggy Hall I think her name is excuse me if I don't have the name right I have nothing against Ms. Hall. However, her argument on mask and I uh, is not is not going to finish the problem. It doesn't address the problem, and I've told her that, but she doesn't want to respond. When I'm looking at comments and people keep throwing in, "Have you seen her work?" and "Go look at her work," at odds essentially with what I'm saying, that's not helpful. I have no problem with her talking and her telling you how she did it for you. But that's not going to stop the lockdown. There's only going to be a couple ways to do this as far as I can tell. And that's why I keep advocating every week for everyone to do that. So uh, Peggy Hall has done some pretty interesting work. She got, I think, if I get this right, and I don't go look at her stuff too much. I, I do when someone sends it to me, it's important. But most of the stuff is not important as against stopping why they think they have the authority to even have the mass measures that you defeated didn't stop the rest of the measures, did it? Just the one you didn't like. And all of the measures are unwarranted. And how is that? I don't even need to know medicine. I don't need to know anything. More than there was a law that I'm being Im supposedly imposed by, that the officials of which had a duty before that to perfect comply with before they had jurisdiction and authority to say a thing to anyone. And then, once they got that, it was only within the constraints of that black and white law, which gets us to who they're imposing it upon. I have found no statutes of people sending me laws and looking at it and working through to try and help people focus in on what they need to do. No law says that there was, even if they have the government has authority, they can put it on the public to protect itself. It always says you have the sick you're working on, the jurisdiction is over the sick, and you can do what you want, what you need to do within the law, reasonable and lawful, to protect the public. And so what you're watching is uh, the people who say we have a future we want have taken protecting the public and placed it in an improper place. You don't protect the public against itself by controlling the public. The health laws for communicable disease happen to be you find the sick people and you are given the authority to do whatever it takes within the due process considerations on top of it in order to control, if you will, the a communicable uh, danger to the public. Not to control the whole public for it to protect itself, to protect against itself. And so there's been this big mis focus and people I don't think really think I really don't think people think about this stuff and, and I've had to because I'm attempting to help people who decided they want to go do their their thing whether that's to protect themselves right to make the first step to get kind of roll up your sleeves and understand what it's about for a mask or move farther and start to actually start to challenge the jurisdiction authority that's been assumed onto officials without lawful warrant and I don't know why that's not so hard to ask in a letter, like I, more to the point, demand where is, where the, du here, the duty in the statute says that the pro local health official finds a communicable disease after a report of a, dis a, list, a listable or com a communicable disease on the list. It's even so limited to that. I don't know why it's so hard to write a letter demanding the evidence of how they found, why, that they found, how they found, and the certification to and determination of the infectious agent upon which they have declared an outbreak. Where was the first report? How? It, why is that so hard? As I don't understand. Why more people aren't doing that while they vociferate about how much they're in the lockdown and how much they, uh, they are not agreeing with it. And all the time I see spent in all kinds of other manners of, of text writing on computers. 
No one sits down and writes a simple little letter. And I say, no one. Those of you that are doing it and have done it, the handwritten note I'll refer back to. Three small, short, handwritten paragraphs on a note-sized paper, not even a full 11 and a half and a half by 11, caused a big smile come to my face. To see what I'm telling you in the simplistic form that that was and all that that was, was really a joy to see because that's how close you are to start the process. To start to ex execute and find out how they keep the authority they believe that is assumed to be under a warrant of law and it's not. And so those that would, as I saw, respect fully disagree with me, you're not listening to me. There's, okay, I appreciate that you want to be respectful, but to disagree with what I'm saying without producing a better remedy is not really respectful, not only to you, to me, or to anybody. And then anybody who, who would prefer Peggy Hall's perfect addressment of private interference and not and a, a soldier within within the local community in the office of a council man or woman doing that attack. To stop that is important. But that's not going to stop the war. That's not going to stop the idea that these people think they have a delegated authority through another authority that never qualified that they had jurisdiction and, and authority to do what they were doing or upon whom they're doing it. And so I want to, I just again, take all this time to discuss lo some really basic stuff that people get confused on. Like I have to do a disclaimer when I say none of you are doing you're doing what you need to do. You all take, some of you take umbrage to that. Well, I'm going to tell you, some of you, all you that are doing what you can, I mean, not just, oh, I, that's all I can do and I'm going to put, cross my arms and that's it. Let them do what they're going to do and I'm not, I'm going to resist. That's not what I'm talking about. Those of you that are stepping forward, going through the, processes that you do to defend yourself that's great but that those things for you are not going to stop the onslaught coming the way worse stuff coming and if you've got that much gumption to say go go and do you're going to have to well you're going to, I'm just telling you those of you that already can do that you watch the tsunami of of destruction coming relative to mandates relative to all the pressure they're coming on, all the things they'll take from you under the color that they think they can take it to protect. The, they take it from you to go do uh, what they say is going to protect the public, which is destroying you, which you're a part of, makes no sense, and you don't even understand how to say, wait a minute, you don't even have the authority to even have a say yet. You haven't shown it. Where's the evidence? And in the absence of evidence that they were required by this black and white to do, you move on reliance, they don't have it. I've said, if you do it, the more simple route would be for the habeas because the obligation continues to be on them. And we get beyond and before what Dr. Pamela Popper is doing in Ohio and her attorney or this other attorney on class action, uh, Reiner Fulmich, who I admire for stepping up. But... When you see what they're saying or what they think they're getting at, I'm telling you that you don't have to prove all that. It's in the official to do. And if you keep being quiet, the ability, I can see it now coming around, coming around what I look at and where I live. There's now, it's moving. The, the, the target now is moving into the presumption, complete presumption of lawfulness with maybe no ability to get at it. And that's because nobody stood up. And the more that they confine it, the more people that have to be rallying in against the the assumption of power instead of the demonstration of it by compliance with law. You're allowing that they don't have to comply with the law. You talk about masks, you're not arguing and not challenging. It's not an argument. You're not challenging that they've complied with the law that was stated in a simple sentence. Okay, it might have been a couple clauses long. It has a couple commas. It's not just a few words. Maybe it extends itself to maybe even 20, 30 words. It's still one provision with multiple clauses of duty upon an official, not you. You argue the mask and you're not supposed to wear it? Great. But that's not going to stop the thought that they have the presumption of power. This is what you saw in all the other cases across the nation up until, I think, the Philadelphia case 
where the judge said, wait, we're not going to let Jacobson run run by the wayside. But that's not definitive of everybody's rights either, that case. In fact, the very first sentence, I was doing a review here just this a few days ago, the very first sentence is fatal to everything I'm saying if you adopt that. And for those of you that have been listening to me, you really need to go find the, the, the what Stick, Strickman the case in Philadelphia, federal judge, go look at the first sentence. And therefore, I'm I'm telling you that's the distinction right there. You can't do, you can't accept into a record that allows a judge to say that. That's fatal. And what I've been suggesting, steps before that, they can't get to that yet because you already have the official without demonstration of any evidence. They've complied with the law to hand them the jurisdiction and authority that they presume upon everybody. But if they don't have, it's not even a presumption, then once they haven't shown the evidence of it, now you've got a different problem. Now you're going to have to come with some kind of a remedy, and then you're going to be up against those that have so far rallied the troops in conspiracy in the government in order to keep you from that, that truth and that law. And when that happens, you're now even further into not just a separation of powers problem. Now you're in a conspiracy of a breach of the establishment of government by the branches. Did I speak too fast there, folks, for people? I mean, I don't even know what I... I've got no reflection here. Do you understand how far into the problem that we are? And it's no doubt we have trouble and why we don't see the justice that we expect. We've never actually demanded it. And then when you demand it, they do all these kinds of shucking and jiving about it, and there's other remedies. In fact, it, I started to think about I haven't talked to a gentleman for years and years. He actually talks too fast for me. I had to slow him down every once in a while. Say, hold on now, let me qualify what you're just saying and move this into something that I can ta make tangible. There's not that many people out there, folks, that would be able to run with this like we need to be already. But anyway, he, he came to my mind, I'm thinking, somebody like that is what we're looking for. If I'm going to work with somebody, it's going to be someone like, well, if you will, the people that I admire in their prowess within the law. Now, it's interesting, He, this gentleman I'm thinking of says he tell, said he learned, he says, and he'll tell you, that he learned from someone else that I admire, but that that man's uh, execution is improper. If you can understand, if you've now listened to what I'm saying, I'm telling you, people can have considerate and similar knowledge. One, I would say, is someone I would work with. The other, I don't think I could. Or at least we would have a lot of contention in what? The application of what we know. And also understanding that choosing a path may be many paths to choose from. That's also a potential. But reasonable, critical minds can work that through. Where I work it, it doesn't matter. In some regard, you go down, you find any one of right paths, you can protect and actually cause an, an invocation of other paths if you know what you need to do within the case. And, and this is, again, looking at the battlefield. It looks the pathway that you're going to go. You have it laid out. You speak to the future. In other words, you speak to the, you, you anticipate the failure of what you're doing. You speak to the, the review, and you build the review failure into another cause. Now, it sounds like a lot of work, but what else are you going to do? Actually go to the Second Amendment? I don't think so. It didn't happen in Virginia. You, you, th you talk bad and you talk big, but that's not what's going to happen. You're all going to sit there by cr literally like crickets. And so I'm way off here. I'm, thank you for all the question and the and the input. It gives me something to think about. But I notice in the commenting and such, if you're not you're not really listening to what I'm saying. I'm not again. I see. I got to do a disclaimer. Not all of you are not listening. Please, I know. I'll see in the comments later. <laughs> Some of you are listening. Some are half listening. Some are arguing with me while they're listening. I, I get all that. It's not a judgment. I'm not pointing my finger at anybody. I'm saying. We have a bigger problem that we're going to have to get away. We have to remove ourselves from the problem to get at it. And we move, we work from that other raise, We raise our consciousness and move from that level. We're in a serious, serious way here, folks. And I'm astonished to watch people do everything but and then rely on uh, these attorneys. 
I've told you over and over, I've analyzed immediately how the case would not be proper. I've acknowledged successes within that point, but also shown you where it may have fallen short when it looked like a success. Why? I'm not here to exalt me. I have nothing in this in that regard. I'm looking at a society, and I'm being, as I said, affected by those that believe in authority, authorita, un, unproven authorita, unwarranted authority and jurisdiction. And I'm being affected like a billiard ball being bounced off the rails of that, as everybody is on top of it. That if we don't get this under control and we don't bring the foundation to us and work from that, Everything that you're watching that you complain about, everything that was predictable in the election of the Biden coming in and their disclosure that they're going to bring on the green religion, which is essentially going to be what they'll call financial, but you won't have a dime to your name when they're all done with it. And then it'll be digital. Is coming to fruition. As I said, Trump probably gave us a more time it certainly, I'll tell you, it did relieve us from a lot of extra work when the agencies of the federal government started to have to reposition themselves relative to what his executive's order were, as I told you, he could do. But now that's all going to be gone, except, maybe I should get over here to this other tabs now. It ain't over yet, folks, for what I've been telling you. I don't even know. I'm not going one way or the other. But the electors have yet to speak, as I understand it. And so, what I told you weeks ago, the one contribution I would give to this condition of the voters vote harder and the electors elect a president, uh, is in play right now. And there's, interestingly, just, there's a couple people mentioning it. But that's in play. And I won't, again, get further. That's still yet. See, and this is a full, you can tell the total disrespect and non-classy, there's no class in the world anymore. But when leaders are actually congratulating a candidate, a projected elected candidate, and don't wait for the United States electoral process to finish out, shows you, you can just look and watch, they're all the players, they cannot wait to tear this place up. And if you look at who they are, they're telling you what the future is already in the telegraph. I'm not saying they're not going to be there to do that. They're already working to destroy this place even further and faster. But you just watch. You watch who's coming together right now before the United States process is finished, one way or the other, whichever way it goes. And so, on that, I guess we'll move over. Thank you for the comments. Listen to very carefully what I'm saying. I'm not, I'm not challenging anybody for what they do. I'm not, I am saying though, you better look a little bit farther down behind the lines of what you're being affected by privately to see what's coming is, has momentum, it has organization, it's well funded, and it can all be tripped up by you knowing one statute relative to the imposition of this using COVID as the gateway to get you back over to the political overthrow. That looks like that is the green religion that's international is all until someone shows me different and no one has yet done that is all this whole their whole thing their whole army the fuel for that whole army can be the tanks can be emptied with one statue is, is really a fascinating observation at least for myself and I would hope you would think so the same it's not like we have a, a battle to fight the law predates this. The law must be complied with, unless you shrug your shoulders and say, oh, the law is nothing, and laugh. As I've said, in practice, in experience, through Jefferson Mining District, in asserting the law, the black and white, that is objective now, they can't call you tinfoil hat, whatever, conspiracy theorist, whatever, jibber-jabber, whatever gibberish they want to say in the courts. They can't do that when you're literally speaking out of the code. They have to honor that black and white. Now, they may try to retwist that, but that's easy to, to catch most of the time. And so, is anybody presenting that? Or no, do I see social media flaring up with all you hate about what's going on? 
like standing outside the Supreme Court is going to do anything to that institution and or the cases that got there or the judges or the judiciary system or the bar association instead of taking the rudiments of the established authorities like a habeas corpus long history for that remedy cannot be denied by the system maybe tried to be denied to you but you you then have at least the weapon that they have to try and defend themselves from and the object isn't that you have to strike them. You just have to present it. The habeas is a question of, what, of upon the one, the captor, of by the captee, you, the lockdown victim, the, asking for the warrant of how they hold your body where they do. It's not on you to answer how. Neither could you prove the negative. They have to show affirmatively their warrant. And when you bring in fraud on top of it, it's all, again, another b burden upon the, those that you're talking to. But So who, who is going to be, how old is the president was a question that came out right after the election I thought was pretty telling as well. Hey, Siri, how old is the president? The answer, Kamal uh, Harris. How do you pronounce her name? Kamala Kamal A. Uh, Harris was born 56 years ago on Tuesday, October 20th, 1964. This is after even allowing for the president-elect projection to be Biden. Apple's product told you Kamal A. Uh, Harris. Now, I told you that was a possibility and I looked to that as a potential. I'm not going to buy into that. What I want to say is, remember this little statement. Notice that it's a digital uh, digital company, a big, giant corporation, probably maybe the richest in the, court, in the world, had the ability to change that answer once they were given notice, meaning they had that programmed to answer before they got caught. And this company called Apple means you no good. And anything coming from the Siri is that propaganda they want you to know. They're no different than Google. It's not new. I want to point out, though it may look like a bit of a joke, it is suggesting something. And it was suggested by a corporation that you are all tied through with their product, that they use you as the product, and they exploit you. And so keep it up. Keep it up. Vitamin D supplementation improves cognitive function. So I found this interesting right after I saw that last story. Maybe we should stop asking Siri. Maybe we should take some vitamin D, and maybe we should have our own cognitive function so we don't have to ask Apple. An apple a day is not does not keep the doctor away in that regard, if you understand how they've pulled together these types of connections in your psyche. But we do have uh, the results in repeated measures of ANOVA, ANOVA, showed substantial improvements in the full-scale intelligence quotient FSIQ, information, digital span, vocabulary, block design, and picture arrangement scores in the vitamin D group over the placebo group. I think I'll end there. You can read more of this stuff. I want to uh, promote that we need to keep ourselves healthy and we are asking for these government, we ask these corporations for benefit. They give them the benefit that they want. We don't understand that. And we have to distance ourselves from that as well. This will just happen to also build into your immunity. You're building your immunity. So building your immunity improves your, your cognitive function. Now they're talking in terms of uh, diseases that interfere with that. But I'm going to suggest that this is just a very interesting and powerful vitamin that I will also add, do not take on its own. Learn what it's about. Learn what it needs, how the body functions, so you can take the, the supplements around it to give it force and effect, and then other, it, it gives other things force and effect. So we can be dumb because we ask Siri, we have to, because we don't have the cognitive function because our diets are so bad, but we haven't understood how to do this, and so we get we go into cognitive decline. We must ask Siri, and our apple a day is a poison. 
apple, or we can start to take responsibility for our health. And vitamin D keeps coming up as one of the core vitamins, as it were, to help us do that. So I'm I'm help I'm advocating let's do that. I think once we can help bring our cognitive function up, maybe we'll be a little bit more animated to protect ourselves. Uh, because over eight or nine months, I have to agree, we're, we're, the societies globally must be in a vitamin D deficiency to allow this sort of abuse and to continue to act like the government's wife in an abusive relationship, if not the child. Ex-CIA chief under Obama urges palace coup against Trump so he doesn't declassify everything. This is a was a pretty astonishing. This was also, though, if you were looking at the the, the Q phenomenon, whatever, the drain the swamp uh, creatures, whatever, this was an interesting what they identified as a nuclear option. Wouldn't that be interesting if this uh, guy Trump would actually do that? Now, I'm not so sure that's going to happen. There's some pretty big, serious considerations for doing doing something like that, but there's a lot of subject matter that he could do that on. But the ex-CIA chief is also Obama's, you know, the Democratic Party, those usurpers in chief, uh, those captors in chief that are coming back to power if the electors uh, uh, suggest so uh, in uh, December or so, depending, I suppose, on how the court cases turn out. But days ago, amid the Trump administration's election challenge turmoil, which was resulted in over a dozen lawsuits filed in several background states, Donald Trump Jr. urged the president to unleash the nuclear option, declassify everything, he wrote in caps on Twitter. We can't let the bad actors get away with it. That's kind of interesting. His son is doing that. That must mean they must talk about that. And you know there's lots of people with special fields of study that would surely like to see information come out and to expose a lot of the things that would help, if not, Trump, because unless he gets back in and he turns his turns of belief here, he's not draining a darn thing, as I was suggesting wouldn't happen, because if you look at his actual decisions, they kind of are half-hearted, and then he doesn't go fully through, and then you find out he's being misinformed, and he's not apparently the genius to figure out systems to get around the misinformation he's being given by the, so, uh, by the swamp itself. So, anyway... The, Declassify everything. Pretty interesting. So the CIA uh, coup, uh, coup chief uh, uh, under Obama is asking for the palace coup to have someone suggest the 25th Amendment should be done uh, in order to take Trump out uh, between now and the end. So interesting. Maybe you want to think about helping to support the declassify movement. But I understand. I would understand he's not going to. He's not going to put the nation at risk to do so. Supreme Court rules presidential electors must back their state's popular vote. I'll just read this. Supreme Court ruled in unanimously Monday that states, and this is a while back, though, just to pull this up, that the states can require presidential electors to back their state's popular vote winner in the Electoral College. The ruling uh, just under four months ago, uh, before the 24, 2020 <laughs> election, leaves in place laws in 32 states and the District of Columbia. If you didn't think this is a federalized country anymore that bind their share of the 538 electors uh, to vote uh, for the state's popular vote. And I just want to remember the 438 electors are the ones who elect the president. That man, I can't remember what the number, it's point zero 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 six two eight or something percent of the whole world, of the whole nation, world, yeah, nation, uh, the, who, who elects and selects that uh, that officer. Uh, and notice here that it says 32 states have mandata- mandatory uh, elector uh, selection based on popular vote. The rest don't. And this is what I was speaking to. Those that have states that don't, you might be able to approach. Now, what's interesting about the 32 states, they said you can penalize the elector. In other words, it, I read it, it doesn't mean that you can force them to choose, but if they choose incorrect to the mass vote, they would be penalized to $1,000. Sounded like maybe a good investment, for those of you in, into doing this, a good investment, a good $1,000 investment in the penalty in order to get that elector to change. Just some thoughts. Now, why am I even talking about when I say I'm staying kind of neutral? Well, I'm not really neutral because I'm affected by this nonsense like you are. And we, we still need that reprieve. We, we need to have the, there's, there's been an engine running to get the green religion to come destroy your, your nation. It got put into neutral. It's been running the entire time. 
In fact, they're so sure of this thing, they're actually putting it back into gear. If you didn't, if you thought things were happening before fast, you watch. And I'm just looking at a nation of incapable people. In fact, I get on the Twitter, people are, kind of argue with me. I don't, I don't get it. There's no better solution than what I'm offering. I'm telling you until someone shows it to me, and I'm waiting for it. When I suggest you only have to go and identify the duty and, and ask for the infectious agent, and if they didn't, they don't have jurisdiction, and you start there, protesting everywhere is not going to do anything. I see thousands of people on the streets that ought to be looking at these fundamental uh, organic remedies and start shoving them down the throat of the system that doesn't want you there. Why? Because you're getting worked up on what law is about again, and they're not going to be able to tell you that you didn't have standing to tell them no. You then become that posterity that was going to be ever vigilant, and you prove it. You just don't stand there like a bunch of subjects, employees, medical employees that are under control of the government. No, you stand up on your, in the foundation of what the trust was supposed to keep that is now breached. As I said in Virginia, it says it, what I think it's Article 3 of their Bill of Rights. The maladministration of the government by government officials is actionable on the terms of the people to do so. Where are the people in the lockdown? It really, it's fascinating. China COVID-19 vaccine trial halted in Brazil after reports of patients' death. Just on the titles, folks, you can just tell this is a global movement. Uh, China's trying to get their, their products. It's all about the product and commerce. And they've now find out the COVID-19 vaccine, which has no, at least in the States, I have found any no certification as to its cause. You have what they're telling you is a symptoms vaccine. What they're telling you is they're not stopping the cause or transmission or susceptibility uh, points. They have never studied that because they haven't identified the infectious agent. They're going to make vaccines which reduce your symptoms or invo invoke your symptoms to say that to tell you that they've reduced your symptoms. They're treating you all as sick people without the proof for it to give you a symptoms reduction, purportedly, if you believe the theory, reduction medicine. These people are without being your doctor, without knowing your medical history, and despite you'll look and find the data sheets, I hope, we'll get back to that here in a moment, that will tell you what your problems are. And so we're looking at, they want to reduce your symptoms or cause you to have some symptoms that are reduced in order for you to think you've had something. They'll test positive. I told you they're going to do that as soon as they get the antibodies. Who else, who knows what else they've got in these? I might, I may or may not have stat, uh, reports on this. What's inside them? I'm going to go to the product data sheet. That's why my mind's going over there. It's always, what do you use to defend yourself, folks? I've been trying to tell you how and what and what to have in your mouth. Before, without just saying, oh, you don't have the right. No, they've assumed the right. And you didn't stay, say otherwise in a more proper and formal form, and I've been offering how you start to do that. And so I get, it's not really, I, get, I feel I'm irritated, but it's not irritated. I, in a way, I can say I'm scared for you all. I really am just not seeing you protect yourself, and we have all the power. And people are going to be hurt, and they're going to die. Then it's all on. I can't. It's not a. It's not a hoax. But it's not what Elon Musk said. Bogus. No, it's fraud. It's criminally organized fraud for profit and gain and control and the destruction of every one of you wherever you live. The government, even though you may not like it, even that much is going to be destroyed for a governance, a bureaucracy run by technocrats by technologists, not scientists. We haven't heard too many negative reports about China's full court press for a COVID-19 vaccine, which involves at least half a dozen standalone projects that have reached the latest stages of testing. But just as trials for AstraZeneca, Oxford vaccine project and the other Western projects have been halted sometimes for a week or two, so now too has the Chinese project hitting the wall. Not against their own people, no, against the Brazilians. Anyway, stopping here. This is a symptoms, there's no such thing as a symptoms vaccine, and there's 
by by their definition here, they're not going after the infectious agent. And you wouldn't expect it because they haven't determined and certified to one. What we find is that they did it by models. Oh, they try to point to some protein. Why are, then are they using samples and so-called core, the sample for what they're bouncing it off of from someone's back, the throat, the back of someone's throat or nasal capacity that they found in Washington to be the balance. All you're looking at is the garbage in that, that guy's system as the PCR bubbles it up and amplifies it. Remember, the PCR has been shown to not be able to identify at the limit, the minimum limit, which is what you're supposed to do to identify at 20 cycles. They've jumped it up to 30 to find something. So you can't identify at 20. They've made it so you see something at 30, but to make sure that they see something, they've got to go to 40. Anything above 20 is invalid. And then it never shows what they're talking about because, again, this is the same problem of saying, oh, we, gotta, we have the power to protect the public by, by locking down, by imprisoning the public. No, you're supposed to go to the sick one, and you have the power to control that condition. And the courts will back you up when you attempt uh, to keep the rest safe. It is the same problem here where they bring in the idea that uh, PCR can test something, but in fact it's from a pure strain, not the garbage can of a human immune system, you human animals. That the, vet, that the army vets are taking care of now and going to. If you don't get how serious this is becoming to, to all, all y'all. It's the same methodology of taking the problem, making the what they're supposed to protect the problem, and conditioning that. The problem on the PCR is that it's, you're looking at a garbage can, so they make that lawful, or they make that valid, and we're going to control. If we see that, that means that you are being affected. If they're going to do that now, they have you under their control and can contact trace you. Anybody who's getting tests right now is lunacy, absolute lunacy, before before everybody should be, and this is a just a, just a straight without any other knowledge, everyone who who is in the United States of America at least ought to have challenged the jurisdiction and authority of every public health official before they can believe there's any authority. We should have done that as a populace, but we're so divorced from our own laws, establishment, our own justice, our own rights. Although we speak about it a lot, it's easy to say. We are not exercising the protections that should come first, because why? We should really know these people are, these government officials are under a limited form of government. And when they say anything, we should be challenging their right to say that first. And then if they win the point of the jurisdiction, then we challenge over whom they're supposed to be having the right to do so, and to what extent. Now we get to the masks. Now we go talk to Peggy Hall. But to, like I saw in the chat, to, to defer what people to Peggy Hall against what I, opposed or against to what I'm saying as it's preferential, you're doing a disservice to people. Yes, tell, tell people at Peggy Hall if they want to go fight the mask. But if you want to stop this nonsense, the crime against you, the global crime against mankind, you're going to have to look a lot higher than the than the the mask on your face, and it's not that hard. But because this thing's not stopping, China they're all promoting their stuff. They want to get this in. They reference it to all the other failed things, and we find out if we just read quickly in the first first paragraph, it's a symptom so-called vaccine. There's no such thing. It's no different than I said, if, that, if all this is is a symptoms reduction, I think I'm going to go to the stuffy head fever coughing me rest medicine first. The adverse effects to that, I think I can handle a lot better, and they're short term, as far as I understand. Not with these things. Not with these so-called frauds called vaccines. And this is what I told you about susceptibility and transmissibility. You don't hear anything about this. This is part of the determination. They have to analyze before they can get to anything. This is being water. This is just like water going out to sea, wasted, because nobody's saying, wait, we should build a dam. We should qualify whether or not this is even something that, that, that we have to do. And we are being, as a society, being washed out to sea because we're not damming up this 
festering wound that pretends to come in and destroy our lives like some raging torrent and flood. The law was sitting there to dam, to be a restriction to that erosion. And none of us are, are stepping up. Now again, there I go. See, disclaimer, not none of us, most all of us. And then even those of you that are doing something, I'm telling you, we're going to have to go higher. we got two or three dimensions and levels. Higher we have to fight this. Because they're coming with these things. And if you didn't think so, here's another story. It comes right along. It's the notice in this, uh, it's the one thing I do like about the social media and the Internet is the notice it's telling everybody that everybody denies, doesn't accept, doesn't understand what it's telling them, complains about, and doesn't give themselves advanced knowledge and, uh, to, to use it to protect themselves. UKPM, Britain, listen, UKPM meets with Bill Gates to discuss implementing global vaccine program. Although Ticketmaster denied it had come to a final decision on whether the mandate to vaccine certification to allow people to buy tickets, may many express their agreement with the idea that one commenting, inject me now, the report in the Billboard magazine claimed that the ticketing company would mandate customers to prove they had the COVID-19 test or to take the vaccine and purchase. This goes on to say you're going to have to get these vaccines or not. The story on the headline is that Bill Gates is going to the UK Prime Minister for a global decision. How does the UK Prime Minister have power to discuss a global imposition unless you're dealing with a bunch of psychopaths and insane people? Ticket master's master picking up. Now I see the NFL and these people are now. You got to get the. You got to get these swabs, these tests. The, the dumbest thing to do, and in, in all I can understand from a, a law standpoint for evidence, it's the dumbest thing you can do before you challenge whether or not they have jurisdiction. You get a swab test. Now you're behind it because you just agreed they had the test, and you're not. And you've told them you're not smart enough, or are you? You don't have responsibility enough for yourself to protect yourself against an excess or abuse of discretion and or delegation. So Bill Gates is going to the UK. The companies in the United States are actually already moving ahead. Do you see a, you don't see a problem with that? What the heck is Bill Gates? I'm not talking about the fact he's everywhere. I'm saying he is not an authority that you have public private partnerships working together is the green religion already on a global scale. For those of you that keep denying this, that I am telling you the, the local law was the dam that was to keep back the torrents that he would erode the the establishment and your protections if only you would catch they would identify it identify the dam's existence say there was an obstruction to the type of tyranny that's destroying eroding this country it's all in one statute relative to public health authority they have to determine and certify to the infectious agent. And yet here we have the UK, again, like no, different, no, no other crown holding, already buying into the fact that they believe they have an ability to make a global vaccine program work, which means they're dealing with other people behind the scenes who have. And going to get it, they already have it worked out. They're going to get this through. And I'm saying they're doing that because over the last 10 months, I say that because I told you this was coming in January, actually the day before, a couple days before the change of the year. And then two months, three months later, it it showed up. And then since then, no one's really doing what it takes. And anybody who has, hasn't really broke it down yet. We're still working some of that out. This is on its way. This is in the work. This is coming as a, as a tsunami to do a biological fukazilla on you. Only it'll be, it's, this is COVIDzilla because it doesn't really exist. And yet we're going to have devastation around a myth. But I don't get that either. But so prime minister's working with Bill Gates, public private partnerships. It's right there to tell you the notice is there. Your protesting in the streets is not going to stop this at all. And then we want to move into, they're going to do this vaccine. They want a vaccine program. We've been promoting it. Oh, and this came through, and I want to remind you because it was in a nice place, and yet I went here and didn't find the COVID vaccine package inserts. I'll direct you here to health.mil package inserts, and you see a list of all the package inserts 
that are available, and I don't see COVID-19 on it. I don't see SARS-CoV-2. I don't see flu-like symptoms. I don't see any of the, you know, the coffee, cold, head, sneezy, rest, medicine, injection. I don't see any of that yet. So I'll give you a link. You can read it. I, I, I've been telling you for years, read the package inserts. Why? Go read where it tells you what the counterindications are. And when you start seeing harm and death and all that, you then have a procedure to go back and say, how do you do this to sit non-sick people? You're going to end up back where I've told you, where you're going to challenge, you better do it the fast way, challenge that they never did the infectious agent, so they can't even use that. But even if they had, why why are they subject, why was the least uh, bout of imposition, which they also have to meet, the death? And then you got yourself into maybe the administrative side, if you don't want to do the law side, to say, we're going to have to figure out something that's a lot less dangerous. How about since this is a symptom jab, which is kind of impossible, how about if I just go try NyQuil first, if all you want to do is minimize my symptoms so that I don't flood into the hospital and destroy your hospital system, which has never happened. Anyway, have a word in your mouth. Set yourself up. Package inserts. I just offered this. It came from the military. Why not? They're going to move it anyway. Until we see it here, they haven't given you notice of the of what the what they're supposed to, you have the right to know. In the absence of the right to know, you have an action that you can force on them, whether that moves it from, see, I still think habeas is a start, then you move an injunction. But you have to know about this stuff. You can't just think you know. Everybody who jumps into this, I've found out, you don't know what, you, you don't know what you're dealing with. A lot of work, a lot of time that we're not making any progress and just trying to figure out what the heck is going on when you attempt to move organic options and remedies. Can you understand this now, folks? The people that made this place, the United States and the Constitution, put in the Constitution a remedy that they knew how to effect. In fact, you hear many people who knew how to effect it immediately as the place started to destroy itself within 20 years, attempting do, using the remedy to challenge unwarranted restraint of liberty. That today... I have not found anyone that knows that. So before we start talking too highly about the Constitution and what it's there, it doesn't do anything, folks. You have to do it. You stop the harm against you. I'm saying there's an army coming and come. It's here. It's infiltrated. It's a cancer. It's, it's an invasion. We're surrounded already. What's your weapon? And I'm not talking the Second Amendment. You're not going to kill... COVID-19 with your Second Amendment. Package inserts. Go ahead and read through them. Find them for anybody. If you're getting, you get to see them in one place, I guess is the point here. We're going to wait now to see if you will monitor to see when COVID uh, vaccine gets approved and what that, if you can't find the package insert, maybe the military will tell you what they're going to try and jab you with unless you have a word in your mouth. By getting it, getting a copy of it, finding the counterindications, find out that they're severe, find out the limitations, then add into your positive, well, how is that the least imposition on me where you're just trying to reduce symptoms and you haven't found an infectious agent, so you don't even have an th objective basis to apply it, which means that you don't have jurisdiction or authority, jurisdiction to do with your your, what you're going to do, or authority to do it against me where you can't find that I have been sick. And those of you that haven't taken a test, you can say that. Those that have taken a test... You're at the mercy of whomever has those results and into the future, since you're going to have to continue. If you didn't see the trap there. Actual headline, COVID-19 vaccine may have unpleasant side effects. That will mean it's working. And the double head fake backflip uh, movement about how this thing works against you, they're going to tell you that when you have side effects, it's working. They're also going to tell you when it's, you have side effects and it's working, if you deny all that, it, that you've got a mental case. If you say you don't want to go through that, then you're going to say you're harming the public, you're a mental case. So here's the propaganda coming. COVID vaccine may have unpleasant side effects. How about if you look at the data sheet that I just told you about, and you identify uh, beforehand, and if you're really sharp, you're going to move it beforehand and enjoin the imposition on you beforehand, before you even get confronted by going to a store or something and all of a sudden get run through 
a line that forces you into maybe a military type of injection system. I've seen pictures about that. May have unpleasant side effects. Why don't you just go ahead and get that those uh, product inserts, understand them, write it down, then go and challenge the authority for not finding infectious agent, and then you put the report in the that they're going to be doing this against most people, maybe even mandatory, and you challenge that the side effects are more and dangerous because they don't know about you particularly. They would not know about anybody. So that you at least have a defense, given what I see is coming to make it, it, it will be mandatory. They, I've heard, I've heard, they may have up to six, the military may have up to 600 million doses. That would be 300 million on the two shots, right? So 20-something million of us escape. That means most of you all are going to get caught up in this. And then understand this new Pfizer thing that they're promoting, which is a big lie as well. And you got to look into that. John Rappaport doing another fine job to expose how they get their effective rates. They're saying it's 90%. By the government's own needs, they say 100% was needed. A vaccine that only works 90%, and we don't know how it kills the rest to make them no longer a threat. Uh, it, it could not fulfill what they want to do, which is 100%. Mandatory is 100%. So they're already starting wrong, and then the, the science, so-called science, the, the technologists that come along to try and do the statistics are all incorrectly done as well. If you don't have an understanding of that when you go to defend yourself, if, if you, I should say, if you defend, decide to defend yourself, and hopefully sooner than later, you're going to be up against this if you don't position yourself correctly. The way I'm suggesting it to you, you don't have any of this to present and define and argue at all. You first are focused on whether or not they can gain jurisdiction by compliance with the statute that required to find the infectious agent. Before you get to anything like masks or distancing or jabs or what's in the jab or any of that stuff or the amount of harm they're doing. See, it's not just that the masks can or cannot be worn or need to be worn. It's that even if they're going to give the government authority, official authority to prescribe them so-called without a license to practice medicine as well, they, you still have the argument of, of least imposition. And I've talked about this for years, and I exposed it through the mining law and us dealing with the uh, public land management. The measures that an agency puts on you within their jurisdiction and authority have to be the least. And the burden on them is what's practicable. In other words, the burden is on the government to show that that was the least, but only when you challenge it. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, you got to start paying attention because that's one of the other sides that's going to, if you are, have no jurisdiction, no authority, no law, you know, because the bar members are sold into this thing like they told us they are since the 90s, that they're going to support the green religion, sustainable development, then you better have a, an ability to have another backstop in the administrative side and you force the practicability standard on them to show that they're what they're doing is minimum. What do you get to do then? Then you get to expose again that they never determined the infectious agent to even know what the heck they're doing. And then you get to say, and to prove that, your mask measures didn't have to work, your distancing didn't work, your other provisions didn't work. Why? Because you had a second wave that you predicted. In other words, you never intended to stop this thing. So it was fraud from the beginning. Am I talking too fast here, folks? I think about this. All you have to do is write this stuff down. You have to instigate it with your cause to protect yourself. All the stuff I just said you have is a little note sheet. Hopefully there's a lot of people that are doing this so that when you see the injustice, you go after the officials that they're supposed to be have in trust to protect you against this can be found out as well, and you have collateral attacks on them through other measures and means. Everyone rolls their eyes when I say that because they don't want to do all that, and I'm telling you folks, this is not looking pretty. COVID vaccine may have unpleasant side effects. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> there's nothing good about it. It's all it, the whole the it's it is a side effect, an unpleasant. The whole thing is an unpleasant side effect of you being a cricket and not challenging the lawful jurisdiction of the people that are walking at you with the needle. The emerging role of DNA vaccines. Fascinating little report. Uh, admission, I think I saw here, 
It's been questioned whether or not these can change your DNA. There's been denials and all this. You need to have the, the, the understanding of what to look for. I offer this just as a small little bit uh, to put in that, again, the excess. If you, get, if you don't want to challenge jurisdiction when they start to do the imposition, you say, what well, you didn't show that it was practicable that you would change my genetic structure, and I have right to not have that happen. Well, how do I know that? Well, it says in one of the documents, I have a link to Medscape. It was a study that was done or an explanation of what these plasmid DNA vaccines are. And I'll read just a section of it so to understand that we are, again, you're in a very serious state of affairs. To stay silent and, and not even try what I'm suggesting is, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know how that affects each one of us, so I don't even know what to say. It cannot be that good because it, it's not just about the jab obviously it's the whole societal thing that they tell you is not going to get better now that should have been it should be that should be the, the notice if it's not going to get better and these officials have no jurisdiction and authority where'd your country go who are you even without the country you are the country and you're the country people how are you going to defend yourself here is it going to change your there's a denial that the stuff will change your DNA. Well, here's a discussion real quick. The plasmid DNA vaccine carries the genetic code for a piece of pathogen or tumor antigen. What? What do I do here? Do I explain some of this? Do you understand what you just heard? I guess my, my mind keeps going, wait, you got to slow up. You can't even read this stuff. People don't get it because if they did get it, they'd be talking like you and they'd be doing their remedies. But... Part of me wants to read through this. Part of me says I have to explain it. What do I do? I'm going to read through it, and then we'll go back quickly. The problem with that is I forget where all the important parts are and have to read it again anyway. The plasmid DNA vaccine carries a genetic code from a, for a piece of pathogen or tumor antigen. The plasmid vector is taken up into cells and transcribed in the nucleus. The single-stranded mRNA2 is translated into protein in the cytoplasm. The DNA vac vaccine-derived protein antigen is then degraded by proteosome, proteosomes in the intercellular peptides. I'll stop there, go back. They are tumor or pathogen antigens. They don't know what that is, and that's already been through someone's immune system. It is that genetic code, which we know through the PCR test, is what they say the same process, transcribed and translated. But it's a hybrid that says it's taken into the cells and transcribed in the nucleus is a DNA change. Enough said, you can read through it. That doesn't terrify you what they want for you and how that needs that is a little excessive if all they're trying to do is stop your stuffy head, fever, coffee, can't rest medicine. Scientists 3D print microscopic Star Trek ship that moves on its own. And I think as I just read that, thank you, Jules. I noticed you posted again on the uh, on the UCY TV YouTube, thank you for letting me know you're okay. I got real concerned there for a bit. And uh, I think I got these from your your Twitter, now that I thought about that. Scientists 3D print microscopic Star Trek spaceship that moves on its own. What what did that, what would you think that caused my mind to even think that was important right after I heard that they inject you with this plasmid vaccin, vaccination stuff when you read on this story that they make these molecules, in this case they're being real cute, because someone asked them to, I'm going to make this thing, a microscopic nanoparticle that actually travels through a fluid. And in this nanoparticle, I can create something that actually hunts down other genetic code, causes it to manipulate itself, and interfere with it. Sounded to me like utilizing that prior DNA technology to come into your system and kind of mess with you really, really badly. A team of physicists at the University of Netherlands, I find Netherlands is critical, and it also happens to be sitting there in your Constitution, United States of America, at Article 6, under the debts that are still valid. 
to the Netherlands. Have 3D printed a microscope version of the USS Voyager, an intrepid class starship from Star Trek. Another game show, another show, another fiction brought to life. The miniature Voyager, and don't think, I don't think this is cool stuff, but it's who's doing what with it and to whom. And you're the whom, so be careful in how we get too fascinated on how cool this might be. The miniature Voyager, which measures 15 microns long, is part of a project research of at Leiden University conducted to understand how shape affects the motion and interaction of micro-swimmers. Micro-swimmers are small particles that can move through liquid and their own by interacting with their environment through chemical reactions. The platinum coating on the microswimmers reacts to a hydrogen peroxide solution that are that are placed in that they are placed in and that propels them through the liquid. Quote by studying synthetic microswimmers, we would like to understand biological microswimmers. Said Samie Ohaji, one of the study's authors. This understanding quote this understanding could aid in develop developing new drug delivery vehicles. For example, if microbots that swim autonomously and deliver drugs at the desired location in the human body. Now, when you go back to the last story, was it? Oh no, the new virus, new test. You come to the next story now. You'll start to see almost my horror. I hope you hear my horror without being too sensational about it. What they're working stuff out for you. You have a, now shapes and micro. We have Star Trek now running around your bloodstream. What was it? Inner? Was it Small World? Or whatever. There was a movie a long time ago. Get in the vessel. People shrunk down. Micro swimmers. That's right. Can deliver drugs. All kinds of stuff. They do more than that, though. They actually go after DNA and destroy it. They actually contort it. You know, protein folds are important. They change those folds. Remember I've told you about structure, angles, crystals, shapes. Geometry, very important. They mess with all that. We move on to new virus, new test. So they still are trying to produce a new test. They haven't got the first one, but they're going to still promote that they're doing this. But you've got to read inside this story from Harvard EDU. This article is a part of Harvard Medical School's continuing coverage of medicine, biomedical research, medical education, and policy related to SARS-CoV-2 pandemic and the disease COVID-19. Listen very carefully about what they just said there. No one's called it a SARS-CoV-2 pandemic. They did differentiate it from as from the disease, which is the symptoms. While COVID, so if you got to keep up with how they keep messing, moving the goalposts around, the terminology is all important to identify them as fraudsters. The point is they are still working on this, but you want to understand what they're doing under cover of this. The, while the COVID pandemic, now they call it COVID pandemic, there's never been proof between the linkage or that it's a pandemic. I've been through all this before. I, not my words, not my opinion, not my denial. It's what the official called officials, the appropriate medical experts, which are not medical experts, just by rule, because they said so, uh, What tell us if we want to buy into their buy-in, their promotion. While the COVID pandemic shut down research laboratories across the country earlier this year, select labs at Harvard Medical School in Boston Children's Hospital geared up, including that of Wesley Wong. Wong direction. Wong and his team responded to the threat by developing a simple, experimental diagnostic test for COVID-19. Remember the experimental part. Remember now when we hear where they put it. And it whether or not it ends up being like PCR, it ends up being in no different place than where the PCR may legitimately be used and never out in the wild. Why? Because it can't discriminate. It works and not not to lock down the public to protect itself. It doesn't work from the garbage can of the human immune system in order to to specifically identify any particular thing. It requires that particular thing to start with, that you only have a small amount. Why it, the, the technique was developed to make that small amount of the things you know, the thing you know, amplified in amount so you can deal with it in a research setting. The technology improving DNA nano switch 
is a new way, new way of probing a test sample for evidence of infection. Probing. I don't know how many times you've poked something from the outside to figure out what it is on the inside, but that never tells you anything. I think the doctor's done that to, to my kidneys or something, and they said, oh, it's sounding kind of funky. Couldn't tell what was going on, but he said it sounded kind of funky. We're going to have to do more tests. So, probing, test, sample, test, sample. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't have any origins from it. Of Evidence of infection, which is what? No more than the PCR will tell you is happening in your in immune system. This is not an isolated, an, a thing that's been identified separate from an inter prior interaction. Anyway, going on. Let me go through all the names. I don't need them all. Remember that the Boston's Children Clinic, if you don't think this is serious, and after your post your progeny uh, to affect the posterity, because Wong and his colleagues have been de developing DNA nano switch technology for several years, they are able to pivot quickly to apply it to COVID-19 diagnosis. Nothing that they said before that says they can diagnose, but they're going to now assert it. The DNA nano switch starts with a piece of single strand DNA. Oh boy, did you get back to the other one? The emerging DNA vaccines? Yeah. And attached to the end, uh, to either end of the DNA are compounds that interact with molecules that the researchers want to study. Wants to study. Such as antibodies to a protein made by a virus. Are those the antibodies or is that the body's response to, to the virus? Once, uh, once added to the blood serum sample, the DNA antibody nanoswitches float along uh, centuries looking for their targets. Once they find them, the antibodies bind together. The bond between the pairs of antibodies and the protein causes the DNA to change shape, shifting to a closed circular or loop shape. If no target is found, no target is found, the DNA strand remains open in an unlooped position. The technology, which is not yet used clinically, has shown promise, promise in research studies for other diseases, including detection of prostate-specific antigen and marker, uh, a marker of prostate health. For COVID-19, Wong is engineering a trifecta of D DNA nano switches, something that they don't even have the first clue on the first fecta that can detect the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies produced after the exposure of virus of RNA made by the virus itself, which they've never actually isolated. And so, let me go back. This thing targets antibodies. What if those antibodies are central to your immune system function? Uh, terrified me when you find out that these things not just float. They can put them in the shape of a Star Trek to go have fun shooting down your immune system. Liverpool's mass COVID testing could be a game changer. Another one of these tests. I don't even want to bring this story up more than to say someone finally agreed with what I characterized the test as. Uh, in this story, I believe it is, the rapid antigen test that delivers results in 15 minutes. Liverpool's, UK, you better listen, what they're doing to y'all, mass COVID testing could be a game changer. Well, I think it's this story, if you go down far enough, enough, this is that rapid antigen test. This is not the PCR, it's a variant, what I call a variant of that test. And they all work similarly. They all are not specific and they do not differentiate between antibodies. They can differentiate between particular types within the immune system, but nothing from the source of that. It's just what your body responds to. You get down way down in the article and then they finally tell you what this is about. Remember, this name for this one was called the lateral flow immunoassay. I likened it to a different type of test that we all will. A lot of people know about, women would know about it for sure. And I want to read the confirmation of what I told you then this would be. And I asked then how many rabbits would have died with this test, where they admit now 
the, the uh, danger, there's also a danger that the government will undermine the program by overselling it. Although the rapid antigen tests being used are cheaper and faster than the gold standard polymerase chain reaction PCR test, their drawbacks is accuracy. They rely on the same technology, what's called, they rely on the same technology, folks, what's called a lateral flow immunoassay. It's not a test. We went through this before. That's used as the basic pregnancy test. That's used in the basic pregnancy test. When I saw that, I just busted, I had to laugh, folks. What did I tell you it was when I first saw what the lateral, I didn't even know there was such a thing, but when I first read it and reported it on to you, I said, this is the pregnancy test. I hope not many rabbits are going to die testing for COVID. Well, that was the reason why they got the new test. Why? Because they can look at a very particular thing that happens to a woman because the fetus coming is a poison to that woman and the body responds to it like a, an infection. Think about that one. And so they can test for that antibody response. It doesn't mean they know you know what that response was, except we have other things that we know about. We can look and we have other evidence we have to look at, and all of a sudden we see, oh, there's changes also going on in other places. So we're dealing with the fasting quick as a pregnancy test, guys. Guys, if you didn't think there was a commingling of the sexes here, the unification, the unibody, unisex front world you're never going to future world you're you're not going to be separate from how they treat you all as one that's your unity anyway going into this your uh, pregnancy test over there in liverpool uh, is a big threat and accuracy they admit right there it's going to be oversold uh, i told you these are all the things you can take notice of and you uh, in this case you put the step back one because your main your main thrust of what you're doing is to identify whether or not they can produce the evidence to allow them to have jurisdiction, authority, or what we would call the power to act and determine. They haven't that haven't had that. It's the same thing as a judge. The judge doesn't have jurisdiction. Those of you that go to court and try to challenge this, or don't, well, you think you, you tra challenge it, the, the, the judge has authority and jurisdiction. He has the authority to hear and determine. The public health officials, same thing, authority to hear and determine. But... That's conditional on whether there's compliance with the legislature's mandate. And so you're dealing now in the separation of powers question or problem now where you find there's no evidence. The legislature mandated a thing shall happen before delegation of authority. The absence of the evidence of which is reliable to say they don't have it. And therefore you can claim that whatever authority and jurisdiction they're claiming is unwarranted. When you throw in that they're do whatever they're showing is by fraud, you've got two layers. They are still bound to have to change. Okay, so this is consistent, as I've been telling you. Why? Because I told you where it's still continuing, the UK and Gates is going to go global vaccine. I don't know how they get the jurisdiction authority to decide for the world, but this little pipsqueak called uh, Gates, well, he came out of nothing, I remember, and he went into nothing, actually. He, used to, he was sharp enough to figure out to get people around him that could do better than he was. And look where he is now. Uh, but at any rate, he's uh, got no medical degree, and he's talking to a prime minister to make a global authority program, which has no basis in law whatsoever anywhere. And they're going through all this. Liverpool, you're seeing it. The UK's locked down. Australia's being locked down. Everyone's being locked down. Places are being re-locked down tighter in the United States. And we get that why I'm trying to tell you to step up for your own defense. As we go back, I think, to Michigan, Whitmer pushes to criminalize refusing to wear a mask in Michigan. Pushes to criminalize. So these, she is not going to give up. I told you that in the next news cycle here by the week because of the timing of the broadcast. We're seeing that these people are not stopping this is not going away and then now we're into the new influenza season we hit october and i told you they were going to wrap this one up they're now blaming i told you they combined the influenza with uh, something they have never discovered or certified to they call it covid has the same description essentially i guess this one has a, you have a little bit more difficulty breathing maybe 
what it is, it tests for what, the common cold or influenza. That's all that those tests will detect, and they don't tell you which one. Well, let's say do specific tests we found out, and then we found out that multiple assay is not accurate. It's the same problem, and now they're combining that multiple assay together to try and tell you, with all the problems that I read about it, that that's the gold standard. The gold standard is a fraud. You need to point that out and call that out, but on the second step, not the first step. In other words, you, as you might walk in and see where Reiner Fulmich is telling you their evidence of their their uh, parliamentary whatever procedures whatever they did showed no no that the PCR was meaningless. That's only as a the only that's not your first position. You don't get to that actually till you assert the challenge in jurisdiction. What you throw that in now in the media was that they used it. It's a fraud that they relied on that to try and get jurisdiction. And so, because this is a, a staged thing within the law, and so then we get to the cases thing. We called it a case-demic or whatever. It's not even that, folks. If you go, please go read. You'll learn how to be smarter than the next guy or gal. It's real simple. Go find the rule for the definition of a case, and you won't ever find that it's the PCR test, ever. And so it's not a case-demic based on a positive result. And so it's not actually a case-demic. It's fraud. We can give it all these names, or we're going to have to settle down and call it out for what it is, because that's saying that these people like Whitmer, who are trying to criminalize innocence, are committing treason against the law, uh, the you, the ones that they were sitting in trust. But you just can't say that. No one listens to you if you say that. You have to come by the steps that they violated, as I've been telling you. And until someone explains to me a difference, I have to continue on this as my experience and study has guided me to come here to tell you. I don't know that there's, literally, I listen, there's nobody telling you this stuff. Nobody. No one, I guess I should say. A body being an entity, one being flesh and blood, if we want to go there. Whitmer pushes to criminalize refusing to mask people. This is not just Michigan, but Michigan, you're, she's, she's all over this. And you're going to have to make that example and protection for yourself. You can be the example for the rest, as we're trying to see happen in Tennessee, not Ohio. Not as a class act, global class action. Not in Canada. For as much as I admire those attorneys stepping forward, they're stepping into the second half and not challenging the authority. When they when you do that, you've already seen many of the courts say, well, if we agree, like the Pennsylvania case, the first sentence says that the, we agree that COVID's here. That's fatal to you. You can't allow that in to happen. That's not only not communicable, COVID is only the symptoms, it's also not what was supposed to happen in a law that a federal court judge allowed to be a fact and have force and effect. Complete fraud in the first sentence of the Pennsylvania decision. However, he wants to take, make it a cause to challenge Jacobson that the governments have been using to pummel people with. And it's really, Jacobson didn't stand for the fact the government can pummel you where they can't show that what they're doing is under the law. Anyway, uh, going over here, a big tech... As the big tech tyrants tighten their grip, join us for free speech at Parler. Was the opening at this. Free speech is not going to stop criminalizing refusing. And I'm this is written by James Anthony, no relation that I know of. And so here we have the promotion comes before what you need to do. Like I said, no one's telling you the stuff you're getting behind the woodshed. Anywhere. And... Fewer listening and fewer are understanding what to do and few take the steps to try to do and I am yet to find anybody that can actually effectuate what I've been saying without having to work to understand what we're up against that shifted that we never noticed. Moving, moving on, I just want to point out, okay, parlor, I don't know. These people, these social networks, it doesn't matter how much you talk. Keep talking. It doesn't stop that some governor is trying to criminalize the non-use of a mask. And this concerted effort is not going to be addressed by even someone like Peggy Hall, who locally may convince the councils to stop. This is a woman who, who just violated, at least working through a different path, 
than what their own Supreme Court says she didn't have authority to do. What they did in this case, they had the health authority make the mass mandate. So if you listen to what I've been telling you, you would subvert all of their efforts if you would do what I said. There's no place for them to hide once you challenge the jurisdiction and not challenge the, their ability or the, the amount of things that they do. A quote, quote here, we, we have got to take action now. Boy, do they listen behind the woodshed? No, but you do. You have to take action now. Moving on here, in the quote, this week I sent a letter to the Republican leaders in the legislature urging them to pass legislation that requires Michi Michigan Michiganders? Are you geese? Uh, to wear masks in indoor places and crowded area, outdoor areas, Whitmer said. We do think that it would be helpful for to our health or state or our economy if it was codified in a bipartisan way with our legislature. I told you this is what was coming. They're going to codify these criminalities. When they do that, it's going to be very difficult for you to remove them if you can't even do a habeas now. She's saying action now. I'm saying action now. We would be totally opposed at, our, at what we want to see happen. You Michiganders are going to be cooked geese here really shortly if you don't step up and challenge her directly for the failure of the statute you have in Michigan that I have read. And thank you to a couple of you that are attempting to come along to do something with the habeas, notwithstanding the time and delay it's taking. And you watch as you wait. It's getting the noose around your gander's neck is getting tighter and tighter. Here's how they did it, though. And here's what you have to pay attention to, and it's all addressable the way I've said. According to MLive, as I'm reading the article here, the current order in place comes from an epidemic order emitted by the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, but Whitmer possibly feels that it needs more legal weight. Well, no, they're trying to get this agenda in. They need those as laws so they can defeat you before you get started. What they're doing with the Michigan Health uh, human services, I understand, hasn't been done properly. They never, they've created an epidemic order without identifying the infectious agent. Just as I've been telling you that they, is their Achilles heel. So we got two functions going on in that paragraph. The health authority is working. They claim underneath their own authority that has yet to be challenged, and she's going to the legislature to try and sell them on making legislation to make her tyranny permanent. And so we got to, again, I told you, it's going to come, it takes more and more and more people to shut this all down. Otherwise, your future is the future they want. I keep telling you this, and people maybe shrug their shoulders. So I go to, so what did I do to tell you how I go about doing this? I know nothing about Michigan, their laws, their agencies, or anything. Who do I know? But I looked in the, or in the, I look inside the story. I want to know a little bit more. I found a passage that was in this report, and it said that they did an order from that from that organization, that agency, and I tracked, copied that, put that in a DuckDuckGo search engine. It popped back with a few links. I looked for one. I was looking for more. I then found the core for the MDHS website, and it talks about their issue, their orders. I found in that list their order. And so I did this in a few moments. For those of you thinking this is difficult to go find out how quickly you can find out, they are not stating what has to happen if you knew the law that they were supposed to do or the rules. And I found from Michigan.gov as quickly as I didn't know where to find within a few moments, I found this order, MDHS, from the story now. I got no, I have no more knowledge about Michigan than, than where to find stuff than that story. And the Internet being this part of the wonderful thing, Found, the, found this MDHHS issues emergency order designed to protect the health and safety of all Michiganders, all you geese and goblins, I suppose, over there in, in Michigan. A directive restricts gatherings, requires face coverings, limits bars, and other venues. And if you go through, you find out the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services Director Robert Gordon today issued an emergency order under MCL 333.2253 restricting gathering sizes 
requiring face coverings in public place spaces and uh, spaces and limitate and places and limitations on bars and other venues. The order follows the Michigan Supreme Court decision on Friday, October 2nd, that invalidated the COVID-related executive orders. Today's order relies on authorities that were first enacted after the Spanish flu in 1918 and that were not an issue in the Michigan Supreme Court. If you think these people are not are, not, are fluid in the battle and they don't know where to go and how you're going to and your notice to to you you're going to have to have be on your A game if not better. Quote, when it comes to fighting COVID-19 symptoms, folks, we are all in this together. Who is we? It's only those that are the future we want against you. So understand how to read this as well. When we, he says, going on, we need Michig Michiganders everywhere to do their part by wearing masks and practicing safe physical distancing so that we can keep our schools and small businesses open and protect the brave men and women serving on the front lines of this crisis. I'm not going to read no more. I want to go back up to the point where he says, do your part. I'm saying he's demanding you do your part under his assumed authority. I think it's a he. I may have been asking you to do your part to challenge whether or not he has evidence to back up that he has jurisdiction in order to make that order. It doesn't matter when the law was of the uh, 1918 flu. I suspect it's the same type of authority that's been given when people were saying that they wrote laws, that there was a limit to the government, and the focus was upon the contagion or the one uh, reasonably pr presumed to have it. In other words, you had to identify the infectious agent and a bunch of other parameters. So he wants you to do your part. I'm saying do your part, folks. I agree. The governor wants to destroy you, says you got to act now. I've been saying that since at least March. Act now. However, You've been listening to me say we're going to act in a slightly different manner than to accept the edicts of t tyrants that cannot show compliance with the law, cannot show evidence of compliance with the law. Now, if you get into the point where they are saying that you have, to, you don't understand more than to defend yourself against a mask use, I have another link. I think I got this off minds.com. It's a unique Lee, only one name, unique Lee presentations. Interesting website. I don't have a way to tell you, describe you, but he has lots of documents you can get and maybe even a video uh, that I think I, is available relative to mask studies that were done on the detriment of the mask. Now, once you get into fighting about the mask, now we're back into fighting whether or not it was appropriate when you get to this level. I'm not saying this is what you start with. I'm saying if you find yourself in this battle, here's some a body of evidence you have to research a little bit more to qualify the truth and the original articles for. It's a, what, what I found to be a nice place to get information if you needed to defend yourself against the wrongful imposition of a mask against your right to be healthy. They don't have a right to make you sick in order to protect you, uh, protect the public of which you may be a part, depending on your awareness. Now, okay, so that's, again, just a place to drop off. There's some people who want to do mask stuff. Go to Peggy Hall. Go to go to this play, guy uh, or lady, you, you, uh, uniquely. The point is I want you to understand the subtlety. That's not your actual argument. That's not the fight you're in. You're actually agreeing to fight way behind your own lines relative to masks. What I do want you to know is information in case that becomes like your first fight and you want to move into where you need to go or you want to establish a basis of the authority that the limits of their authority and your plan is to move further against them, against their encroachment. Then here's some more information for you. Like I said, I don't get focused on this mass stuff. It's irrelevant that it's harmful because they didn't have a jurisdiction to apply it in the first place. Then they didn't have the right... The, the delegation of authority was not on healthy people, and they haven't determined how you're not healthy. And that's why you don't want to take those tests. You testify against yourself, right? You have the right to remain silent, and then you go and get a test that testifies against you and in the control of the tyrant. Study. It makes a uh, study. It was a mistake to close schools. Another group of people, after your children, we said that earlier, the study the children's hospitals are studying is very well, they're cool on one level, but scary technologies uh, for your for your little ones. Why? There's no threat. 
And why? Because they can get away with it right now. And so another uh, Patrick Wood again, he's been coming out with some uh, good uh, compilations of information. Another practicability thing, how they, it, how another report says not only the masks are no good and wrong, and you can go through all that, Here's another mitigation measure that was wrong because it does a different type of harm. Why do I bring this up? Because here's somebody that does a little bit of a study. You qualify what they're saying. You put it together as a harm, a consequence of not following and not producing evidence of compliance with the statute, allowing them to have jurisdiction and authority. The first pandemic bell ringer was Professor Neil Ferguson of Imperial College of London, and he issued the first policy proposal of closing all schools since his computer model has been discredited and his policies slammed, this is the only outcome of letting crackpot ideologue scientists, they aren't scientists, folks, anyway, he writes scientists, uh, execute social engineering programs on the world. Ferguson and his academic crowd had plenty of pre-existing experience promoting alarmist global warming hysteria before trying their hand at pandemic. After all, pandemics produce more dead bodies for the news feed than does climate change. So as Patrick Wood sees, I've said before, he sees too. This is a, con uh, this is a consolidation of this, this attack. Uh, as you, if you want to, go to uh, Tulis Report, download the complaint, and you'll see the proof for how that exactly works out. It's not just conjecture or tinfoil hat nonsense. These people are saying that to us. I'm uh, trying to offer the counter if people would just understand how I'm saying it, it's don't make differences about what I'm saying. Don't take it as a challenge that you're not. Step up into this level of, into, of, of integration of how you protect yourself. Don't work on the crumbs and the leaves of the tree. Hack at the roots, as we've been told. In March of 2012 and 2020, the memo went out from the pen of Carter Mecker, bioterrorism expert advising the Veterans Administration, Understand the high level of integration this was happening at the time. It went out to the public health officials and others from around the nation. Close the schools. Pull the trigger now. And it happened. And with it, civic freedoms we have long taken for granted. Freedom to travel, operate businesses, go to the movies, even leave our homes were taken, taken away. They shut the schools. Then it was like dominoes following one by one. The businesses had to close so that people could watch the kids at home. The shop centers had to close because the otherwise kids would not just gather there. The churches, too. Entertainment venues were shut. Even parks closed. The stay-at-home orders followed from, from the school closures. In many ways, the whole legitimacy of lockdown hinged on the merit of the school closure. I'll stop here. Patrick Wood writes really well. He exposes the ramifications for the consequence of the Officials not following the law. What you All you have to do is provide a demand for evidence. You're not looking for a Freedom of Information Act or an open records request. You're demanding the evidence they have already that they've made their determination they had jurisdiction. If they don't produce it within a few days, and you say that in your letter, you will be ready to move for remedy on reliance. They don't have it. And if you do it by habeas, that presses them again. And we then state in here, these are the consequences when a government official doesn't follow what the legislature, when an executive branch official doesn't follow what a legislative mandate is, you get destruction of your society. Neither is that within their ability and authority, even if they have jurisdiction. Okay? So if you're listening to what I'm saying, we're pulling together these elements by what we can read. If we didn't have words in ourselves of the consequences and people do the research and write, we can take their information, package it up for the need we have to challenge people like Whitmers in the world that are moving the legislature itself to go ahead and give them the license to be tyrants. As I was telling you before, I have the opportunity to try to throw in a few words here and there on some legislation that would limit the tyrancy uh, to a time, but agree to it So even so that I said the people need a remedy even for that shortened time. They can't live underneath a tyrancy, a tyrant for 30 days, 28 days now to be legislated and agreed to. The legislature has no authority to agree to that kind of tyranny. And yet it's being allowed to go through, which the courts will just, as you see, if the legislature says they can do it, then they can do it. 
And there's no mind in the there's no mind in independence of that branch, the judicial branch, because they're tied into the bar, which is a the, has a sentiment of putting on the global order where you are property, you have no property, you don't need due process, and we'll tell you what to do, and go put on do what we tell you, or else you don't get. That's what's coming on, and that's what the bar association promotes. It's, I don't have to know what more to say. The states will try to say that they're distancing themselves, but they can't. They're they're member and they hold an allegiance. You want to talk about the other allegiance in the the dual allegiance in the Middle East? Yeah, we have one right in our in our own shores. The domestic enemies, as I can see them, who are reticent to give you the the actual law right now, if not sooner. Uh, so, so now we have your tests, all these mitigation things, all these things they bring you into. I've been trying to show you notices here on potential problems. I don't use them to argue about. I don't put much fanfare. Uh, ooh, look what how you know we said this or that I was right or that or not or or look at the damage. No, you take that this is a fact. You, this could be one line item statement in your protection and your in your remedy to try and protect you that you point out something like this. Well, we hear the cerebrospinal fluid leak after nasal swab testings for COVID-19. Read this article where it talks about the swab was pushed through, I think it was a woman's bone up in her head, like people thought was going on, and uh, she literally had a, a puncture, which causes serious, uh, talk about side effects, serious side effects. If you look carefully in the story, which, I, again, I'm, some of, part of me wants to read, a lot of times I don't want to read. You need to read. You need to see these words. The stories are set up all the same, and all from the same consequence, that when you get the test, they have not studied the problem, potential problem that they do or they can't tell is there or not of your biological structure, whether or not it would be damaged by this test. Is one more point to throw in that they do not know you, you do not agree to an examination, and they are without their authority to demand anything about you. You have the right to remain silent. As long as you're innocent of what they are fraudulently claiming you to be guilty of, a vector of communicable disease, they don't have the knowledge to not know they're not going to hurt you, and you have the right to avoid that. There's a better statement than to say, you're not doing that to me. Next thing you're going to find here soon, they're going to lock you down, and they're going to do that to you, and maybe actually cause the problem right up against your brain. And so... Okay, do I read a little bit? In March 2020, see, it all starts the same. Coronavirus 2019 emerged as a global pandemic. All lying stories, but here they are. This is all a study. Testing of the presence of active, secure, severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. Infection is one pillar of the global response. How is that when no one has ever been able to actually find it? Anyway, I'm not going to go read I don't want to read this. You have to read this. You have to find out these swabs can do this. What the most important thing is, is that they don't know whether or not, without a prior study, whether or not it will harm you. This is really similar to the vaccine part of uh, in instructions, the, the part of the package insert. Just like it, you find the counterindications and you say, but you don't know if that's going to harm me and I have the right to, to avoid that harm. You need to choose a lesser harm, if you can show me first that you have jurisdiction and authority. And what I'll assert on top of that, once you do, and not until you do, there's a better, easier uh, remedy for me. If all your vaccine can do, all your tests can do is say that I have, I have some sort of infection, not differentiate at all what it is, and then you want to jab me, that only going to get rid of my stuffy head feelings, coughing, rest medicine stuff. I'm going to go to the drugstore first. You have that to say then. Otherwise, you're standing up and you're saying you're not going to do it. They're going to force you to do it because you don't have the objection with the valid reason, which I then throw in is their admission that they can cause harm and don't know it. And then you throw out that, so there's got to be an easier way to get this done where you're in ignorance about me. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell admits the truth. We're not going back to the same economy. So that's the future they want. This was predicted in Agenda 2030. I read the entire document to explain it. This was in the, in the financial economic se sector. 
you, your whole life is about production. They've commingled production with the economy. That has been your problem. Underlying that, I've talked about that before. But they're using COVID and they're using the political aspect and attack on your life. And now your, your economics in your life are going to be forever changed by plan of these overseers who have not been put into check. That it was up to you and they anticipate this. So it's coming quickly now. They're telling you what the future plan is. Your past rights in life are going to change. They don't describe how that's going to happen. We see this, though. People call it a warning. Economic Policy Journal, I've referenced their articles, it, warning. No, this was not a warning. This was coming the whole time. They're moving the economy forward on a global scale. We ne I never thought I could see this. I mean, thought it could happen. Boy, they're they're showing it to us now how that's going how it works. It's the internal infrastructure that they've already been tied into for decades and decades. Warning, it says here, central bank digital currency coming faster than original thought. No, not behind the woodshed. I talked to you about this, I think, what, 10 years ago. Not behind the woodshed. It's not a warning, and it's not coming faster than originally thought. How they were able to spring so much on the world has been coming, like, instantaneously. That was pretty astounding. But that they can pull it off once you understand how they did it. Not quite so astounding. And they gave us clues and we're not responding to it. European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde, how many times I brought her up periodically over the years, signaled the, that her institution could create a digital currency within a few years in what is a dramatic change of Euros Zero's financial sector. Are you part of the financial sector, folks? Well, they're going to make you part of the financial sector. And this is how they start to do this. You have to absolutely put down like a ledger sheet where you are relatively what where they are and what they control and then identify what they don't control. And the only thing I can see now, despite the people that would be not agree with me, is you have to take your organic established remedies and start to assert them. We need to do them in mass so they become more more believable, I guess, because right now people don't even understand what the Founding Fathers knew to impose for their protection. We don't have a clue. And I see that dozens and dozens of people who earnestly want to protect themselves, we don't have a clue, is how we're being taken advantage of. You know, we're not coming in great numbers. There's not, you, you protest outside, but you don't protest correctly, challenge inside. And until that, that becomes a threat to, to this, these people, we're probably likely not seeing much of a change. That said, I'm, I'm not give, I, I don't know why I can't give up uh, on what I see. This is a serious harm coming. It was predictable. It's not coming faster. It's coming on plan. It, it's coming by the same people. It's coming in the same ways. It, it, it's, there's nothing as a surprise here. My surprise is walking, watching societies watch with their mouth agape in the, in the road as the bus comes rolling over them, wondering, what's, wondering what is that? In fact, we should have never been on the road, and that bus should have never been traveling. It should have never been given a license by our silence. And that's the, really the bottom line of this. We either stop being silent, we take responsibility for ourselves, and ultimately, because of the nature of this attack, we'll take care of other people, even if they're not capable, and then maybe partly so, that we, we don't just go after masks. We stop people who would uh, purport to have authority. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com, Jules at UCY.TV. Thank you for what you do over there in letting us be the ghost of the machine in uh, sound minds and normalization of ignorance and minds and bit shoot. Thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose.
Well, that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 